so the different comedians are doing their thing. And, you know, in a roast, you bag on the person being roasted, in this case, Emma Smith, but you also bag on the other roasters. Right. And everyone's doing their thing. And Jamie Foxx, you know, after everyone, he gets up and talks his shit and so forth. And then it starts with you. And I listened to it this morning just to kind of get a, a recap of it. Right. And at first, Jamie was just kind of standing behind you for a mm -hmm. while, which was a little weird. Mm -hmm. And then once you started, he instantly, and I don't even, do you even say anything about him? I think you may have said one or two things about him, but nothing really. I think it was, you know, honesty and all honesty, and you'd have to talk to him. He's given some, uh, and by the way, we're cool. You know, we've, we've seen each other since that time. Uh, but I think it was a professional hit job. I really do feel like I was set up because in retrospect, and I've, you know, long time ago, I replayed, right afterwards, I replayed how things went down. It's almost like putting together a, a murder. Mm -hmm. And I just remember Jamie saying, don't turn my mic off. If you, when you watch roast now, I, I, have you ever seen a roast where the host never has his mic turned off? I mean, it, normally you go up, you roast, you go sit down, you come up, mm -hmm. you know, it's a turn type mm -hmm. of thing. But yeah. I remember him saying, don't turn my mic off. Always keep my mic on. And you, you, you work with equipment here. Yeah. That's something that has to be predetermined. You don't just all of a sudden, hey, hey, turn my mic on. Yeah. He had his mic on all the time. So I, I, in retrospect, and the placement of where I was in that, you know, I noticed, because I had asked to go first. I wanted to get it out of the way. And, you know, I mean, look look, look at you said the, 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 the talent was there. I would have never volunteered. I went like second to last. Mm -hmm. I would have never volunteered to go that late after Monique, after all those comedians. Yeah, Dick Gregory. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd asked to go first. And, 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 and when I asked, it was like, okay, yo, I said, hey, I'm new here. Nobody knows me. Let me get up and get out of the way. I don't want to go. And they were like, okay, yeah, no problem. And then it came back to me. No, nah, you have to go in this spot. Right. And pretty much as soon as you start talking, Jamie Foxx started talking over you. Correct. And he was like, uh, I am your conscience. Right. And he started interrupting you, basically. Correct. Where you couldn't even get any words out. Correct. And uh, at one point, you start talking, you start repeating what you're saying. I want to say this to Emma Smith, man. I'm your conscience. It is a pleasure. <laughs> man, it sure did get hot in here. Am I fucking up right now? I'm your conscience. I really don't need to be up here right now. I don't know what the f I was thinking. When your brother start making sketch. money, you can't tell him shit. I'm your kind. All right. I wish I was in a movie with Jamie. Maybe you right about 48 that. 48 hours. You are right about that. 72 hours. In fact, I don't know. In fact, nigga, I need a co-signer. Can you co-sign on the car for me? I just did another joke that didn't go over. <laughs> I'm your conscience. Maybe I should say something nice about Emmett and wrap it up. Or maybe I should talk about how black people have to struggle. Yeah, that'll get them on my side. Thank you very much, Jamie Foxx. Thank you. I, I needed the help. I appreciate it. I'm not Jamie Foxx. Anyway, I'm your conscience. <laughs> Uh, I'll be honest. Um, I mean, I've been to Jamie's Fox, you know, Jamie Fox's house a couple of times. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we know each other watching that. I really felt like it was an asshole move on Jamie's part, point blank period. And I'm sure he's going to get to see this and get mad at me or whatever, <laughs> but it is what it is. It was really kind of an asshole move with someone who clearly was not on the same level as a Jamie popularity wise and so forth. Uh, and he just literally didn't get, didn't let you get in a word in edgewise. He kept talking over you over and over and over again. It wasn't just like, oh, let me just throw in a couple, a couple of little jabs and let, let you finish off your, uh, your set. Cause you didn't really even get to finish off your set. No, nah, I didn't. Uh, you know, I, I, like I said, in retrospect, I feel like, I felt like I was set up yeah. and, you know, I think that, that, that bothered me the most about it is that. And for a long time, I couldn't get past it. You know, thank God for my wife and just her talking to me because, you know, people murdered me on the internet. Oh, you got killed. There were a lot of people who felt the way you did. 
But then, you know, you know, a lot of people that just came on and they made comments that I got murdered and killed me. But I, you know, I was there trying to just get something going for myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I was broke, I didn't have anything. And the thing that bothered me the most from being a stand-up comedy, no, I mean, a stand-up comedian, normally when things happen like that, at the end, somebody will, the, the person will say something redeeming. Hey, you know what, give it up for him. I mean, you know, I got him, it's all his love. It was none of that. It was yeah. it was it was almost like an execution in that sense, and yeah, for a long time I just felt like, you know, that that I was set up and that there was no redeeming qualities to it. 